Hello and welcome to this video series on Composer. In this video we're going to be talking about cascading style sheets or CSS as it's also known as. Now CSS can be a powerful tool used to manipulate the look of bits and pieces of your web pages. Now one of the cool parts of Composer is that it has a built-in CSS editor and it's called Cascades and it can do just about any cascading style sheet actions that hand coding can do only faster. Now we will only be touching on a few of the many abilities of Cascades and Composer over the next three videos in this series, but I believe these will cover the basic fundamentals to get you on your way to enjoying the benefits of CSS on your website. Now in the first Cascades on Composer video we will work with tags that you are used to dealing with in the HTML coding. Now before we jump into the actual CSS of this page, uh, I want to go over a couple of other things with you real quick. Minor, but still, I think it's important to point out that uh, I went ahead and opened up the uh, four pages we had created earlier. That's our About Us page, and I added this here to the uh, titles as well. The FAQ page, the Contact Us page, and then this is the normal index or home page. But as you can see here, you got this little red box, red and black box up here, and don't have here or here or here. This just tells us that there's been something added or changed on this page that requires to be saved. Because as soon as you click on save, boom, it goes away. So that's just kind of a minor alert. It just tells you that, hey, wait a second, before you go ahead and screw anything up, go ahead and save your work. Anyway, it's just a little visual tool that I think comes in handy. Anyway, um, I also wanted to point out, too, that what we did as far as adding the... Um, uh, video information here, the code for the video. We did it kind of the old-fashioned way. I put a kind of a placeholder here of a bunch of letters, I think A's, a row of A's. Then we went to the source code and then I just uh, highlighted those A's, which is kind of sort of right here. I highlighted those A's and just pasted the code that I got from YouTube that I you know highlighted and copied from YouTube, pasted that in and then bada bing bada boom this popped up which is what it should do. Now then, what I'd like to do is show you a different way or an additional way, probably even a quicker way, to do that as well. So, just kind of show you where on the page we're at. I replace the object code or the video code with all these Y's. Come back here to normal view and you see they're right here. So what I want to do now is go ahead and put that uh, embed code from the video back on the page, only instead of doing it this way, kind of delete that and go to here the heading come on down and right here where the cursor is is where we want to place the code for the video we want the video to show up here in the center of the page so we put the cursor there then come on up here to insert go on down here to HTML and this box appears you just right click and paste in and I actually I already have the code in my clipboard for that video paste in the code that you had copied from somewhere else in this case YouTube click on insert Bada bing, bada boom, there we go. Now then, uh, again, that's one way you can also insert, uh, as you may have seen, PHP code and comment codes as well. So let's go ahead and, oh yeah, and I also added a bunch of text at the bottom of, underneath the video on all four of these pages here. And that's how we're going to be able to better demonstrate the power of these CSS codes that I'm going to toss in here. As you can see here, the header's a little bit different here than it is here and here well they're all going to be the same by the time we get done with this video now then one thing too I'll go ahead and click on save get rid of that guy is that here and i click on this you can see it's the h1 or the heading one tag drop down here we got heading two and the the larger the number gets the smaller the text gets you can see here it gets really dinky for h6 or header six so Let's bring this back up to one, and let's check out the source code for this. I just want to show you this now and compare it to the CSS replacement. So basically between this H1 and this closing H1, all of this here deals with this is my heading, which is this right here. So let's go ahead and get rid of that H1 tag. Um, all together. Go back to the source here. And we will just get rid of all of that. Delete it. And then we'll head on back here to the normal. 
Okay, let me get back here real quick. Where are we at here? Where's our object? Let's throw in that placeholder just for the sake of it. There, we got some room above here. Now we're going to, as you can see, it says body text. Uh, this is just typical body text. And by the way, this is another tag we're going to work with. But first off, we're going to go ahead and deal with the H1 tag. So let's go go ahead and open up our cascade sheets here. Now you can go up here to the CSS editor palette here to get to our CSS editor, or you can always go over to the tools, come on down here to CSS editor as well. Either way, get you the same spot. Now what we want to do is go over here and click on new. Actually, let's cl click on the palette and it'll bring up this is what we're looking for and we want to down here name the tag that we're wanting to add attributes to and in this case we're going to mess with the h1 tag create style rule and the h1 is basically for the header you know the big stuff in the center so let's go ahead and go to text we're going to predefine this and you can see down here in the viewer box what it's going to look like as you go along and make these additions uh, as a matter of fact, we can also do the same thing here. If we go ahead and let me get out of here real quick, just put the cursor in here, and you see right now it's assigned to the header one tag. I know, let me show you this too. Let's go to the source code and see how this looks as a typical HTML code, and then we'll show you what it looks like uh, with just the H1 or with the uh, CSS styles right here all of this stuff right in here tells you how to interpret or tells the browser how to show that text this is my header so we got all this right here pretty much three lines okay just got one two three now then go back here to normal and this is the h1 tag or as it says header tag same thing and I'll set on back over here to our CSS palette and go up here to new name our h1 tag create the style rule so we can come down here we should be able to see the changes take place as we manipulate or add to those attributes let's see if we can change this up here I guess it didn't did it maybe because it's already been selected but we'll see here in just a sec uh, the font weight, we're going to go with, uh, say, 36. I know that's kind of large. We're going to do pixels. And you can either drop down. I oh, see. Yeah. You can either do a drop down. Uh, you have to put in the number first and then do a drop down to determine if it's percentage, pixels, points, centimeters, and so on. And you can adjust it this way, too. And you can see over here how it's making the change as we go along, as we're going live, so to speak. Yeah, 28 will work. Line height, eh, we're not going to mess with that here. Uh, the color, we want to make our H1 tags red. Of course, it's already red, so it won't be any different. And then click OK. And then font weight, we're going to go with bolder. That's pretty much what it is right now. And font style, you got these choices, the case. Um, actually, I'm going to go with capitalize, because that, if you look down here, will capitalize the first letter of every word, which is pretty cool. And then you've got some alignments. We're going to go with center, which is you know typical of an H1 tag. And you got some other choices down here too for uh, text decorations. Overline, see right here. Uh, underline, give it a kind of a box look. Uh, line through, which is typical if you make mistakes, which in other words I use it quite a bit. And then you can go with blinking, which I suggest against because uh, it can be irritating and besides that blinking doesn't always work it's kind of one of those old attributes that um, used to only work on Internet Explorer or Netscape I forget which one but it didn't work on any of the other ones just that one actually I think it was Internet Explorer um, but anyway we're not gonna mess with that line through get rid of all these here because we're not gonna have any of the text decorations on our h1 tag that's something you can use later on uh, so that's pretty much it. You got these other choices up here you can mess with. Background, if you want to give it kind of a highlighted look, uh, we can go with yellow, for example, ish. Kind of give it a highlighted look there. Now you can also thinner, but you see how that thins out everything though, not just the um, color. I mean, that kind of made transparent the whole thing. So I don't like that at all. We're just going to get rid of that. We're going to go back to the white. Thank you.
and you could also define that where it was going all the way across you can define that to where it's only going within the text here but that's uh, makes for a different video altogether but that's pretty much it oops I closed that out didn't I let's go back and check that out right here under the general tab is what I was wanting to show you it shows you all the attributes that we've assigned to the h1 tag so now that any time on any page we have this CSS or this uh, cascading style sheet that we assign an h1 tag or a heading one tag it will automatically take on these attributes now let's go ahead and do another one here too uh, click on that and let's do uh, body tag and there and now then anything within the body yeah, well, let me. but down below the video here we've got some text that I added later on or earlier and with uh, text within the body we want to go predefined Arial sounds good yeah we'll leave it at Arial uh, font size let's go with um, 18 points let's go with points this time because that's a little bigger than pixels actually it's quite a bit bigger and yeah, let's go with 12 points that's typical color we will go with black which we already are okay that's cool and font weight we'll leave it at normal now unspecified just means that it's, it's there's really not much difference between normal and unspecified if you ask me but anyway uh, for the sake of the video if we put in normal then it just adds an attribute and we'll be able to show you that right here under font weight instead of it just being blank It'll, it will give you an actual font weight for normal. Okay, so where are we at here? Text. Um, alignment, we're going to go left. And case, we'll leave that alone. That looks good. Okay, and then let's do one more. That's for the body tag. Let's do one more for the paragraph tag. That's the P if you don't remember. And here we will do, eh, we'll leave it at Arial. Font size, we'll leave that the same. What was that, 12 points? Color black, only with the paragraph, we're gonna go um, italicized. So anything that has the paragraph or the P tag assigned to it, will then be italic and everything else is going to be left alone so that's cool alrighty so as we can see I forgot this navigation link text here was assigned the paragraph tag this is assigned the h1 tag come on down here this is the text I was talking about earlier that is within the body text so this one here let's go ahead and I meant to do one more for the H2 tag. Let's do one more for H2. That's the heading 2. It's a little bit bigger than normal, but a lot smaller than the H1. Or so we shall make it. And let's go with uh, Times New Roman. Font size. Let's go with... Uh, 18 point color I'm going to go with kind of a dark blue and alignment will do center case capitalize and let's underline this one sounds good okay so here this one right here we want to assign that our h2 tag Boom, underline it and everything. Cool. And then these here are assigned to our body tags. Okay, this is italics, so chances are, yep, that's assigned to our paragraph tag. Now, this one here, we want this to be assigned to our H2 tag. Isn't that awesome? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the source code here and see how that looks. Go here to source. 
right up here in the head tag is what I wanted to show you. These are all the attributes or the styles that we've assigned to this particular page. And you can see that it's got the opening style tag and the closing style tag. And they are uh, included within the head tag. So you see here it's all above the closing head tag. Now one thing that I want to mention before I close out this video is that we can actually take all of this off of the page altogether and replace it with a link. In other words, we can create an, an entirely new page that contains just these styles and we can assign that a, a name, say George's CSS or Main CSS or whatever you want to call it, and I'll do that in an upcoming video. But we can have a link on this page that goes to that page that's also uploaded to our server. And every page that we have that link on all we'd have to do is come in and make a change. If we wanted to change, say, the uh, color of our H2 tag from blue to uh, red, all you have to do then is just come on down to our H2 tag and then change it from, this is blue. And if you recall the RGB factor, this one would be FF and that would be 00. zero. Then we could check out our H2 tag. See how it went from blue to red. Every single page on your website, let's say you've got 500 pages on your website, and every one of those is linked to that one CSS page, then instead of you having to open up every one of those 500 pages to go through and change the uh, text color for your H2 tags, you can do it with that one page, upload it, overwrite the existing CSS uh, uh, page, and then boom, across the board, every one of those 500 pages has just had that change take place instantaneously. So within seconds versus hours or days in some cases, you can make those changes. That's one of the cool things behind the power of the cascading style sheets. So that's going to bring us to the close of this video. Our next video, we're going to go into a little bit more detail on some of these other uh, options we can work with on our CSS. For example, these two guys down here. I'm going to go into uh, how to make a class and how we can apply that to our website. Thank you much for watching this video and stay tuned for the next one.